Each year, full-time students at the University of Queensland are forced to pay a student services fee, which their website says is a compulsory fee to help pay for things like sports clubs, student affairs and the University of Queensland Union. The union is saying that uh, that $7.9 million is raised for this academic year. And let's just have a look at where they're spending some of this money. $241,000 is allocated to gender and sexuality, $74,000 to Guri Barimpa, $59,000 to environment. And breaking that down further, we see under gender and sexuality, $4,000 is going to a gender affirmation bursary, $300 for condoms and dental dams, $1,000 for belly dancing classes, $1,100 to paint uh, pouring classes, paint pouring needs classes, goodness me, over $50,000 to queer events like Pride Ball, Mardi Gras and even body neutral beach trips. All of this in a cost of living crisis. Joining me now is economics researcher, the Australian Taxpayers Alliance and student at the University of Queensland, Barclay McGain. Barclay, uh, a lot of this money, I've got to say, seems to be used uh, in the interests of all students uh, for, for programs that are useful for all. But there also seems to be a great deal of leftist activism funded by this compulsory fee. Hi, Rita, and hello, listeners. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. You've hit the nail on the head. And I think when you point to a lot of those, uh, you look at the breakdown, you look at $240,000 for gender and sexuality, and you look at the environmental collective, you know, we're not talking about gardening or trimming hedges. Uh, we're talking about protests against the military industrial complex. We're talking about people protesting climate change and climate change alarmism. And uh, sadly, this sailed through. I'm a member of the UK Union Council, and uh, this sailed through with the help of Labor left, Labor right, and would you believe some Labor light liberals teaming up with the socialists to pass what I would call a far left radical budget uh, for the 2023-2024 year. So it's, uh, it's pretty dire for the year ahead, Rita. Goodness me, so we've got moderate bedwetter types at the student level as well amongst the Liberals. But I, I, I've got to ask, is there any balance? Are they, I don't know, paying for IPA memberships, paying for right-wing figures to speak at the university? Is any of this money going to activism that uh, represents the interests of centre-right students, centre students, uh, anyone who doesn't identify as a left-wing reactionary? To the contrary. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe some of this money, um, particularly from the Environment Collective, which really has become hijacked by the socialist alternative grouping at UQ, um, they use that money to fund propaganda, to warn people about the threat of Donald Trump Jr. coming to Brisbane, people like Kelly J. Keane and Nigel Farage. Um, they paper the entire university from head to toe with their propaganda. Um, so to say that there's a welcoming uh, platform, I suppose, at the University of Queensland is actually the opposite. They're trying to make it more hostile for people mm. with alternative views um, and differing voices. So... Look, it's, um, it's quite a dire circumstance, and I was the only one to um, oppose this budget um, that they tried to sell through, and I was actually censured for being homophobic, solely for questioning <laughs> what a gender-affirming, uh, you know, causes were. Um, and by the way, for anyone listening, uh, gender-affirming causes means that UQ students are forced, who are forced to pay $350 every year for this Student Services Amenities Fund are now paying for hormone blockers um, for students who are looking to transfer their gender. And, and you, you're locked into that. There's no way that you're able to opt out or at least, you know, maybe pass on paying the SAF for these radical causes. Nope, you're locked in by virtue of being a student. So there's not much uh, academic or intellectual freedom happening there, Rita. Um, and it's during a cost of living crisis, as, as you've outlined. No. And if it's happening at you, your university, you can be sure it's happening at universities mm. across the country. It's not going to be just there. And I just wonder where the accountability is. Uh, there's all sorts of sums I'm looking at here, some of them relatively small, $500 spent on feminist movie night, but $19,000 spent on something called 
queer fest. Uh, it's just, uh, to me, how do you, how can you justify that when it doesn't represent the interests of all the students who are forced to pay for this? Uh, now, I want to play you a clip featuring university students from Melbourne. This has gone viral for all the wrong reasons. It's been mocked. But have a look and tell me what you think. Hey Lola, why are you a socialist? Well, I'm a socialist because I think we shouldn't be living in a world run by rich <laughs> be living in a world run by ordinary people. Hey Bella, why are you a socialist? Well, because I think that capitalism is a system built on bloodshed and war and we've got to fight against it. Free Palestine. Hey Oscar, why are you a socialist? Well, I'm passionate about fighting for the rights of my people, Indigenous people. That fight needs to be extended to all fights against oppression and war. Hey Sam, why are you a socialist? Because I hate that billionaires are getting rich off the destruction of our planet. And Sam, why are you a socialist? Because I hate that there is an apathy towards people who are suffering here and that the capitalists are just getting away with it. Hey Rhoda, why are you a socialist? Well, the far right is on the rise and we need a real way to combat it. Hey Winnie, why are you a socialist? Because I want to fight for a world that is free of water when no one has to put into the deten detention centre for no reason. Hey Remy, why are you a socialist? Um, I'm a socialist because I capitalism we shouldn't have to bite tooth and nail for breadcrumbs is this typical of university students in 2024 what is the climate like <laughs> on a typical campus uh, you as a conservative are you uh, free to say what you think even when if it's a very mainstream opinion or are you going to get shut down by people with fairly radical <laughs> viewpoints you're certainly in the minority, Rita, um, as a conservative on campus these days. But, um, you know, you can see these people. Um, it's on show for all to see. They can hardly get through a sentence without dropping the F-bomb. That's the kind of hatred that these people have for the world around them, their circumstances. It feels as though no matter, no matter how much social progress we make in society, it will never be enough for these activists. And, you know, you brought up the the queer fest and the pride ball before. You know, I thought the, the gay rights movement mm. was supposed to be all about um, independence and individual rights um, for LGBT people. Um, but now apparently it's all about more reliance on the government or having other students pay for their balls and their and their gala balls. So, you know, it's, it's quite concerning. Um, and the reason why it's not just affecting university students is because a recent ATO report that the ATA have uncovered, uh, that's my organisation, the Australian Taxpayers Alliance, um, We've found that it's something like $74 billion um, of hex fees are now going unpaid. Indeed, one sole student um, has cost the taxpayer $750,000 in unpaid hex fees. So Ooh. more broadly, Rita, this isn't just an issue that is affecting university students, but because that we've allowed you know, hex fees to go rampant and completely run away with no one repaying these outstanding loans, it's now starting to affect the, affect the taxpayer. Because when these loans are forgiven, uh, oh, yeah. It's not just that this money just evaporates into thin air, it actually affects the Aussie taxpayer. And that's why I think it's important that we're sounding the alarm on this radical left-wing infiltration that we're seeing. Oh, you're absolutely right. We've got so many junk degrees, so many kids wasting years at university for a piece of paper that isn't going to help them get a job. It gives them false hope. It gives them this debt that ultimately yeah. the taxpayer may have to pick up. And, uh, yeah, it's just a lose-lose all around. Uh, just before you go, very quickly, there was some research out today saying that uh, scores, high scores in universities have skyrocket skyrocketed, gone up 200%, the number of people getting high distinctions, and the average mark now is near a distinction. Is that a reflection of how smart the kids are these days or perhaps falling standards? Well, perhaps uh, a lot of students, Rita, have, uh, have tacked on that if you really want to uh, get the best mark in your course, you just affirm the beliefs of your radical left-wing lecturer or tutor. Um, but, of course, I actually do think it's part of a, a whole movement that we're even seeing in primary and high schools, this idea of everyone gets a participation prize, that there's no winners, there's no losers. Everyone uh, gets know, an A, Barclay. Everyone gets an A. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> It's, um, yeah, so it's yes, not, everyone it's gets not a, a high distinction. That we're getting somehow. Barclay, we've run out of time, <laughs> but we'll uh, definitely have you back on for the next expose. 